Pentecost, that we remember the outpouring of the Holy Spirit as recorded in the book of Acts. And we talk about something, uh, we talk about baptism in the Holy Spirit. But I want us just to, to step back from that for a moment, because there are two types of baptism we talk about as, as a Pentecostal church. Some of you will know we're a Pentecostal denomination. Uh, we're part of Elam. And we believe in water baptism, uh, which is believer's baptism. You may have heard of it uh, called that before. And that is where when you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, we encourage you to be baptized by full immersion um, as, a, as a public declaration of your faith. And uh, I know in the last week or so, I've spoken to at least one person here who I've been encouraging to think about getting baptized. And if you haven't been baptized and are a believer in Jesus, then can I encourage you to come and see me because we'd love to plan in a, a baptismal service in the future. And we will, we baptize, say, by full immersion. We don't just sprinkle you with water, we push you down. And um, and uh, we, we baptize by full immersion. We hire a, a local church that's got a baptistry to do that. And that is, a, as I say, a public declaration of your faith. It signifies you dying to your sinful life and being raised to life again with Jesus. And I do believe that everybody who has accepted Jesus as our Lord and Saviour should be baptised. If you were christened as a child, and I was christened as a child, um, it seems a long time ago, 45 years ago, however long ago it was, um, we, 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 don't, we, we would still baptise you now because um, that was a choice that your parents, whoever was caring for you, made. But we believe in a more uh, of a... Of a, of a um, as a decision as an adult or as a child when you've actually made that decision to be baptised. We we don't do children's christening in this church. We do dedications. So it's similar but not the same um, as they would say. And so we, we give thanks to, to God for the children in your life and we dedicate them to God but we don't baptise them until they're old enough to make that decision themselves. So we're not going to dwell any further on water baptism or believers baptism uh, but if you are interested in that and haven't been baptized as an, or as a, a as a kind of a, as a believer then come and speak to me afterwards that would be great great but before we go into more detail on baptism in the holy spirit i feel it pertinent to speak a little more about the holy spirit when we put our faith in Jesus, when we accept him as our Lord and Saviour, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1 verses 13 to 14, the verses all come up, I, I just think, well they're going to come up on the screen, but they are going to come up on the screen and on the laptop as well. And it says the following, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation, when you believed you were marked in him with a seal the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. Now I want us just to, to stop and pause on these verses because they're really, really important. Now obviously the Apostle Paul was writing to the church at Ephesus at this time. But this letter has stood the test of time. It applies to all of us. This, there's an amazing statement in these verses. We are marked in him with a seal. We are marked as his. We are marked as children of God. We are adopted into the family. When a child is adopted into the family in the 21st century, there is an adoption certificate, a piece of paper showing that they are now part of that family. Now, when we become Christians, we don't get a um, adoption certificate. We don't get a piece of paper saying we are part of the family. Rather, we are sealed marked with the Holy Spirit. So when you become a follower of Jesus, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. You receive that seal. Now this would have been very um, evocative 2,000 years ago because this unfortunately was a time of slavery. 
and people would have been marked, would have been sealed. And so Jesus was using, or Paul, sorry, Paul here was using words that would have really uh, evoked an image in people's minds. And when we receive this seal, when we receive the Holy Spirit, when we are saved, that the Holy Spirit starts the work of us being transformed. Many of you will know that part of our uh, vision, part of our mission statement is to see people's lives transformed more into, into more like Christ. And so we receive the seal of the Holy Spirit in our lives, and he starts the process of what, the, if we're going to use a Christian knees kind of word, a sanctification, of us becoming more like Christ, of our lives being transformed, being changed. And that happened, that is there for every believer. The moment that we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, I believe that we are sealed and receive the Holy Spirit. But separate to that, there is baptism in the Holy Spirit. How do we know this? Because this can be contentious. There are some denominations that, that don't hold to this, that believe something different to us, that they believe that you are baptized in the Holy Spirit as soon as you accept Jesus is your Lord and Saviour. My father-in-law and me were just discussing this this week. He's a, a retired Baptist minister. But we believe that there is a subsequent, a separate baptism in the Holy Spirit. Now the time between you receiving, the, the being saved and the baptism in the Holy Spirit, that's up for grabs, so to speak. It could be almost you know, the same day or it could be 10 years down the line. I'm just pausing because I feel sorry for Charlotte because none of what I've just said is in my notes. <laughs> so she's having to go as we go. But so how do we how do we know of this separate, this subsequent baptism in the Holy Spirit? Well, Jesus spoke about it in Acts 1, verse 5. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Now, there is no doubt in my mind, Jesus was talking to the apostles. They were saved. They were Christians. They were followers of Jesus. So he is saying to them, you are, you are going to be baptized in a few days with the Holy Spirit. Later on in that, in that chapter, Acts 1 verse 8 says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So Jesus promises this baptism with the Holy Spirit. And we go to these powerful verses, I think, that Nigel touched on earlier in Acts 2, verse 1 to 4. And it says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. It was a powerful time. Jesus had ascended to heaven. The disciples were, were scared, I think, at that point. They were still being hunted by the Jewish religious leaders. They were being threatened, you know, there were all kinds of threats against them. But they stayed where they were told to stay, and they received the baptism in the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. And we see that they saw things like tongues of fire. Now, I've never, I want to say, never seen that happen. I've never seen tongues of fire resting on people's head or heads. But I know that we can be baptised in the Holy Spirit. You see in Acts 8 verses 15 to 17, the apostles had gone out and were speaking to people. When they arrived, they prayed for the new believers that there that they may receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come on any of them. They had simply been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. You see, those 
believers that John and Peter were with. They were believers. They had accepted the good news. They had been baptised in the Holy Spirit. And that is something for all of us. And I've said as a Pentecostal church, it's central to our beliefs. You see, that's what marks us out as, a, as maybe different from other denominations. There are, are some churches, some denominations that would say that, that, that the baptism in the Holy Spirit was only for the apostles. But that verse we've just read would seem to counteract that, wouldn't it? That it was for everybody. Some would say that, that the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which we're going to look at next week, cease when the last apostle died. Again, we don't believe that. You see, we have, a, we have a statement of faith as an Elim Pentecostal church. We believe, um, uh, we have a statement about faith and what we believe, and part of it says the following. We believe in the de deity of the Holy Spirit who proceeds from the Father and the Son and the necessity of his work in conviction of sin repentance, regeneration and sanctification and that the believer is also promised an, endu an endowment of power as a gift of Christ through the baptism in the Holy Spirit with signs following. Through this endowment the believer is empowered for fuller participation in the ministry of the church, its worship, evangelism and service. The Holy Spirit can scare some people. The Holy Spirit is God. Uh, I'm not, you know, you all know my love for trying to explain the Trinity to everybody and, and Charlotte's love for trying to sign the Trinity. Um, so we're, we're, I'm not going to go into detail there, but the Holy Spirit is God. And we see there in our statement of faith the work of the Holy Spirit as well as the, the need for baptism in the Holy Spirit, we see that the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. You see, I say when, when people come to Christ, when people come to know Jesus, it's not because of what I've said or what Nigel said or what Pauline said or what, whoever's preaching has said. It is the Holy Spirit that convicts us of our need for a Saviour. That conviction is the Holy Spirit that, that leads us to that place of repentance from wanting to turn away from those things that are, we have done wrong. Regeneration and sanctification, well, you know, that's a lot of words to say our lives are being transformed. And then we're promised an endowment, an in, an in, I, can never have, I can't say that word, in endowment. If I can't say it, how can you sign it? That will What's in June? Oh, a gift. Okay, there we go. A gift. Yeah, what do you use that word? I prefer that gift. We can we can go with that. We get this gift of power for fuller participation in the ministry of the church. We receive supernatural power. And that's what scares people sometimes, because they feel a little bit out of control. Now, you can, you people tell me off when I say, I'm looking at the person who's going to tell me off. You can YouTube this, and you can put it in, and you can say, the movements uh, of the Holy Spirit, and you will find some really crazy stuff on there. But when we bring words of knowledge, when, you know, at a, I only use myself as an example because I don't want to embarrass. But when I come up here and say, oh, I believe, you know, I'm getting this word from God. Last week it was um, about hope or hopelessness. And, and somebody messaged me during the week to say that was a word they believe for a situation that they were in. That's not me. That is the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's the Holy Spirit giving me that gift to, to share that. When, some, when, when somebody lays hands on somebody and prays for them and they're healed, that is the Holy Spirit. We are powered by the Holy Spirit. We don't have to be scared of the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit is God. We're not scared of God in that sense, are we? 
God loves us and cares for us. If we can trust God with our salvation, with eternal life, then we can trust God with uh, when the Holy Spirit comes on us and works in us. The Holy Spirit empowers us. The gift of the Holy Spirit empowers us to fuller participation. So how do we know we have been baptised in the Holy Spirit? How do we know that that has happened to us? Well, there are some Pentecostal denominations that would say that you need to speak in tongues afterwards. And this is a confirmation of your baptism in the Holy Spirit. We don't hold to that. Some of you may say, well, what is speaking in tongues? Speaking in tongues is uh, you, you start to pray and to talk in a language that you have never been taught before. It can be an angelic language to God, or it can just be, uh, you know, I was at a meeting, there's a very novice young Christian where somebody suddenly started to speak in Russian. But it's another language. And we don't think that it's necessary for, for that to happen because when we look through the Bible, it doesn't always happen that way. But what I do believe and what I do see in the Bible is it's a very definite experience. That we will know when we have been baptised in the Holy Spirit. I remember my so I didn't realise what it was at the time. But when I look back and see the result of it, I realise that I was being baptised in the Holy Spirit. I was leading a, a youth alpha in a Baptist church in London. And uh, we, when you do alpha, we have um, an away day, which is called the Holy Spirit Day. And we, we spend the whole day together and we talk about the role of the Holy Spirit in our lives and we, we pray into that. And in the evening, it was on a Sunday, no, sorry, Saturday. It was on a Saturday. And in the evening, we had a special service at church. And the minister, uh, a lady called the Reverend Jewel Lee, who led me to the Lord, was preaching. And she invited people to go forward for prayer. Now, being the great youth leader I was at the time, I went forward for prayer. I don't know where the kids were. But I went forward for prayer. And I remember that Jill and a, a, a deacon called Malcolm prayed over me, prayed that I would be baptised in the Holy Spirit, and I just started to shake. Now, I'm not saying that this is a typical experience for everybody, but this is what happened to me, and I just started to shake. And... I didn't know why. I couldn't stop myself. It wasn't a, a violent shaking, but it was a, a, a definitive shaking. And it was at that moment that I was baptised in the Holy Spirit. And my life started on this trajectory, this change of who I was. It was powerful. It was an experience. We, we saw how... The apostles had this experience of being baptised in the Holy Spirit or with the Holy Spirit. I always, I mix up baptised with and in the Holy Spirit. And if I was being a really good Pentecostal, I should always say baptised in the Holy Spirit. So please forgive me. But it's an experience. And it's an experience that is open to all of us. Not only is it open to us for the first time for us to be baptized but also if we've been baptized we can be refilled you see we uh, so there was a famous preacher i can't remember his name but i read the quote this week where he said you know he needs to be filled with the holy spirit daily because he's like a sieve he leaks and we need to be continually Filled with the Holy Spirit. We need to be continually restored. If we want to have supernatural power to, to work in the world, a fuller participation in the ministry of the church, then we need to be ready to be baptized in the Spirit, to be refilled. 
And this morning I want us to spend some time, and I can't see the time, so I'm going to have to be a little bit closer. 11 good, we're okay. I didn't want to particularly preach too long today because this is a precious time. The Holy Spirit is a gift from God to each one of us. And I want us to spend a, a few moments pondering, asking ourselves, do we know if we've been baptised in the Holy Spirit? If we have, do we need to be refilled? And I also want to reassure you that if you haven't, and if you are today, you don't receive, it doesn't make you any less of a Christian. It's about God's timing. And so I don't want anybody, if, if, we, if you feel in a moment when I make that appeal that if you want to be refilled or baptised in the Holy Spirit and you ask and you don't feel anything, I don't want you to go away from here feeling any less. Because that would be wrong and not right. God loves you and cares for you. Wants a relationship with you. If we don't receive, if you don't receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit today, then keep asking. It doesn't have to be received at church. It can be received anyway. But I think you'll know you. I know you will know when you've received it. So how do we get baptized in the Holy Spirit? We ask God and we need to trust God. I think it's always good for us to take moments before we ask, just to, as we've already done today, before we've took communion, just to ask God to examine us. And that's part of the, the Holy Spirit's role, isn't it? We saw that the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. And, you know, there isn't a day, sadly, that goes past where we don't make a mistake, where we don't sin. And it's good to ask the Holy Spirit to examine us and to, to bring anything to mind that we need to repent of. But then we can ask God to be baptised in the Holy Spirit. We can keep asking if we don't receive it. Keep asking for this gift and at the right time you will receive it. For those of us who have been baptised in the Holy Spirit, we can be refilled with the Holy Spirit. We need refilling. I don't know about you, but I have times in my journey where I feel further away from God where I feel distant, where I, I, you know, I feel almost a little bit spiritually depressed. And that's usually, I can put it down to, to, to two things that I haven't done. I think it's two, maybe three. I haven't read my Bible. <coughs> I haven't worshipped, as in worshipped songs. And I haven't prayed enough. One or two or three of those things are out of kilter in my life at those times. And I'm not feeling God's presence. But when I worship, when I read my Bible, when I pray, there's something about the Holy Spirit that just refreshes me. I believe in being real as a pastor. That happens to every one of us. As we grow in our faith, we get to spot, we get to know what we need to do to rectify our problem. You can sometimes walk past my house at six o'clock in the morning, you'll hear me belting out the song we're about to finish with, set a fire down in my soul. People think I'm a pyromaniac or something, but sometimes we just need to draw closer to God. Sometimes we need a refilling of the Holy Spirit. Many of you will go out ministering to people and we, we use that, but you'll go out be, being like Christ to people at work. You'll visit people from the church and you'll be giving out and giving out and giving out and you need 
So this is what we're going to do this morning.